Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 22nd, 2024. Let's get into it. So yesterday I did a, a video. Boy, I tell you, got quite a few views. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing because I'm just a nobody. But anyway, I, and I talked about how Joe Biden's disdain for the 400 thousand uh, marchers in Washington DC about the how we're committing genocide in pa Palestine and of course uh, it, the, the, our participation in this ongoing uh, fiasco in Ukraine uh, he just said uh, let them march he doesn't give a fuck he doesn't care I mean I hope people understand that you can march you can march everywhere you can just march all along everywhere you know go freeze to death the Biden administration does not care do you understand? The Congress, the U.S. government does not care about the American people. And I, I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, we've got a vote coming up in 2024. If that doesn't go well, I, the only thing I can say is uh, the American Revolution. There you go. So, uh, and the farmers are still out in Germany, but that government doesn't care about what the farmers do. They can, just like the truckers in Canada, they're going to they're going to sit there and block traffic and everything, and their government's just going to ignore them. So uh, we can see where the globalists are. Uh, by the way, uh, more news on Avdivka. Uh, it's uh, the Russians. I mean, it's amazing how fast they're tearing through the uh, Ukrainian defenses there. Uh, it's insane. And because uh, that's a, that was a heavily fortified city. It was just remember Bakhmut. I mean, it took the Russians. Good Lord, I think what is it, a year or something to take Bakhmut. They're ter I, I bet they're going to completely take Avdivka uh, within the next couple of weeks. So uh, it looks to me like Ukraine is crumbling. Uh, and I wonder how the uh, West is going to spin this. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure they'll come. Well, I guess they've already started spinning it. That uh, uh, But the thing that worries me is we've got 90,000 U.S. troops uh, massing in Finland. Now, the Finnish, I tell you what, these are some stupid leaders in Finland. Because <laughs> Russia couldn't give a shit about Finland until we put 90,000 troops there. Now, Finland's on the radar. So, yeah, you might have uh, Russians fighting Finland. Because Finland wants to fight Russia, evidently. I mean, why else would you allow 90,000 U.S. troops? The... the the globalist evil empire to uh, occupy your country to fight Russia. And so uh, I do think that we will see at some point uh, Russians fighting American soldiers. Uh, I, I just don't see with this current administration how they're going to go otherwise. Because uh, once they march into western Ukraine, uh, they're targets, man. Uh, Russians got the hypersonic missiles. Uh, they just took out those, uh, what was it, 90 uh, French mercenaries. Uh, by the way, there were some pretty powerful French uh, uh, leaders that were in that building. So the, uh, Macron was pissed off, says he's going to send 50 missiles, you know, and of course Russia produces that. They, they shoot that in a day. <laughs> you know? but I guess it's a big deal to the French because they got no military left, right? Uh, so, and of course, Slovakia, they... they the, the new government took over, and they said, well, my God, we completely disarmed. We got no, no, no missiles, no nothing left. Uh, what the hell was up with our globalist government? You know, they gave everything to Ukraine. And, and so if Russia wanted to march across Europe, which they don't, they're not going to do it. They could just, there's nothing left for the Europeans to fight with. I mean, you know, other than cannon fodder, I mean, the Russians would just, whatever troops they put up, I mean, they'd run out of ammunition probably within a couple of months, you know, I mean, oh my God, don't get me started. So let's get into some of the videos. Uh, you know, one of the things uh, with the crumbling uh, American infrastructure, because uh, we're sending all our money everywhere else in the world to our 400 bases around the world, the, the evil global empire, uh, we got nothing left here. And uh, I don't know if you've been following along, but there's been two incidents with Boeing, uh, Boy, I tell you, I wouldn't. I I'd never like to fly, and I don't fly anywhere because I'm crippled and, and handicapped now. So it doesn't make sense for me to go anywhere. I got my house all set up to take care of me. I, you know, that's what it is when you're a disabled veteran. But uh, there was an incident where the door blew off of a Boeing airplane, and then you had uh, another incident. Let's watch that video right now. Oh my God! It's on fire! Oh my God! It's on fire! Mom! I hope they're okay. I wonder if they're doing an emergency. Oh. No, it's still doing it. It's still doing it. 
Wasn't that insane? I mean, so the, the, it was a cargo plane, so nobody got hurt, and the plane landed, but I mean, it just caught right on fire. I mean, now, I used to work on planes. I worked on the A-10 Warthogs. Uh, it seems to me that the people that are maintaining these planes don't know what the hell they're doing. That's just me. So, uh, I wanted to show this video because, you know, a lot of people don't understand what's taking place. Uh, the Ukrainians, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I can, I, let me give you a quick story. When I was in the light infantry in the army, uh, we went up to, to conduct uh, mountain warfare training. And me, I, at, the, at the time, I was in the Marine Corps before I went in the army light infantry. I just went in the army light infantry because I wanted something different. And uh, so I thought, being the smart Marine that I was, uh, that I would load my uh, backpack with just a shelter half and a poncho. Uh, I didn't bring the sleeping bag, because sleeping bags back then, they were bulky and heavy. And I knew we were going to be hiking through the forest. And I thought, man, you know what? This will make it a lot easier to hike through the forest. Well, that night, <laughs> the temperature dropped down. I didn't know. I mean, it was the summertime. My God, I didn't know that the temperature could go down. I think it might have gone into the 20s or maybe the low 30s. And when you're sleeping under a shelter half and a poncho, I, you know, I, I just shivered and shook all night long. Well... It's been 16 below zero. Why do you think the Ukrainians are folding? There's no electricity. And unless you've got an extremely uh, uh, volatile uh, logistics, I mean, uh, that can bring in heaters and, and fuel and everything else, I, I just can't imagine. I mean, even with all of that, when you're hunkered down in, a, in the basement of a, of a building, at 16 degrees below zero, I mean, you're still going to be cold. I mean, it's just, the, it just wears on you, man. Even as a young man, I mean, it just, your bones just hurt in that cold. And so the Ukrainians, the logistics that, that they're getting, I imagine those guys are, I bet when we find out, uh, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of uh, frozen corpses of Ukrainian soldiers that the Russians are going to find as they, as they move through Avdivka and, and continue advancing. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to talk about that. So let's watch uh, the Russians capture a few Ukrainians in the cold. Group on the position. Готовы к выдвижению. Оружие проверили. Там есть какие-то огневые точки, которые видно прямо вот так явно. Вроде как два ствола сидят. Во. Дальше группу факела. Тоже разведка. Поперестреливались. Берут в плен. Well, that was interesting. So I just wanted to show you some of the, the, the uh, videos that I'm seeing. And more and more Ukrainians are surrendering. Uh, so now uh, what's, what's happening in the war is the Russians have brought up the helicopters. Now, they, because of the Ukrainian air defense, uh, they weren't using the helos uh, to a huge extent in the war. But now that the air defenses have completely crumbled, uh, the helos are being used. Let's watch a video on that.
So, uh, so the, the Ukrainians, I mean, my God, they're getting hit by the, the, the new smart bombs. They're getting hit by the helos. Uh, I, 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 how long can this war go on? I don't even know. So, uh, and then we had some terrible news. Uh, I tell you what, I mean, like I said, the United States is the evil empire. And they, Ukraine just used our weapons that we supplied them, I think it was HIMARS, and they hit the Donbass again, uh, and they killed uh, 25 civilians and injured uh, hundreds. And if you want to watch the video on that, uh, uh, Judge Napolitano, he put up a video about that today. And then, of course, Patrick Lancaster uh, was the guest on that video. But, of course, Patrick Lancaster, he has his own channel on YouTube. I encourage you to go over there. Uh, it's horrific. If you want to see the actual images of dead people, you'd have to go to uh, Judge Napolitano's website. I can't tell you what that is. But, uh, you know, a lot of Americans don't know the history of the Donbass. So I hunted around and I found a video that I think it might be important if you want to educate yourself on, on how this is all taking place. Let's watch that video on the Donbass. During Ukraine's civil war, Maxim recorded hundreds of hours of peaceful towns being shelled and filed dozens of reports portraying those trying to resist it. One of the protagonists of Fadiev's reports is Alexander Agranovich, called Science Sailor. Ну, у нас было семеро, да, и три БТР. Мы брали Мариновский блокпост. А, Мариновку брали. То есть, когда пятерка скрутится и пойдет по, по самому этажу с этой стороны. Mm -hmm. Одна пятерка останется там. Если ничего, я не ищу. Я прошел от конца столько-то, столько-то. Хорошо. Потом а, брали 20-й блокпост, штурмовали между Шахтерском и Терезом. Обороняли Шишовку, отбивались в Неусинске. Под Ещевовкой воевали вместе с Востоком. Ну, это летом. А потом нас бросили в Воловайск. А потом ну, зашли в аэропорт и воевали в аэропорту. In Donetsk, Sailor commanded the Sparta Battalion. Together with the legendary commander Motorola, they knocked the nationalists out of Donetsk airport from where the capital of Donbass was constantly being shelled. Мы зашли, ну как бы, и вышли уже с победы, отвоевав полностью аэропорт. А потом мы перепрофилировались в разведывательное подразделение и выполняли специальные задачи все эти годы. In May 2022, Agranovich tripped a mine and lost a leg, but to this day he remains the company's commander, rushing to the front. He dreams of reaching his hometown of Slavyansk with his soldiers, the place where he had to forget about peaceful living for many years. I got a wound now in this company, in the SVO, on 24 February. The waves were shot there, the waves were shot there, the waves were shot there. На мину наступил, корректировали огонь артиллерии, ну и подорвался без ноги, ну, ампутировали ногу, часть э, ноги. А так, я думаю, буду полноценным бойцом, ничего страшного. Месяца через два запросто. Okay, so that was a that was a cool video. I, I found that uh, I think it was on RT or it could have been Russia Ukraine updates. Um, so uh, the, the last uh, 
video I want to finish up with here is um, the AI Kazam street fighting uh, that's taking place in Gaza. I, you know, you got to give Hamas credit. I mean, you know, they've been designated a terrorist organization, and I'm not saying what they did on the 7th. Uh, breaking out of their open-air prison and, and killing a bunch of Israelis was a good idea. Uh, but I don't see where they had any choice. They had to do something. And, and mainly they hit military targets. Uh, we're finding out now. Uh, been a lot of Israeli propaganda. And I, I won't, you know, I'm not going to get into that. But let's watch a little bit of brief video on the street fighting. <laughs> So that was that's pretty much it for for the news rundown. I did want to go through some X posts. Like I said, the the last video I did has gone uh, viral. I guess I I don't know. I only get you know fifty views, thirty views. <laughs> it looks like a couple thousand people might have watched that video. I don't even know what that's all about. So um, breaking Megatron. The Ukrainian army following Israel's blueprint massacred civilians again. Uh, Ukraine forces targeted a crowded market in the Donetsk, Russian city now, with over 25 fatalities, including two children. Uh, hundreds are reported injured with uh, cases ranging from severe trauma to amputations. Overwhelming local uh, medical facilities numbers are expected to rise as emergency personnel continue rescue operations. So I just wanted to give you the, the, the whole rundown on that. This is from uh, Geoman, uh, who, by the way, follows me, and he actually sent me a direct reply. I don't know who he is, uh, but I, I like his reporting. Uh, it says, Kilitsko fears Zelensky is becoming a dictator. The mayor of Kiev, uh, Valtelli Kit Slinko, K I. K-L-I-T-S-C-H-K-O. i, I got to spell it because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I mean, it's like somebody takes the alphabet, puts it in a cup, and rolls it out and spells these names. So the mayor of Kiev uh, expressed concerns. I cannot call the movement that we see uh, uh, now democratic. This smells of uh, vertically and um, vertis, vertis, verticality. V-E-R-T-I-C-A-L-I-T-Y. What is that word? Verticality. Verticality and authoritarianism. So, boy, his command on the English language is better than mine, huh? <laughs> and he, uh, so the mayor said in an interview with the Globe and Mail, the former boxer is worried that there have, is almost no freedom of speech in, in Ukraine. Yeah, there is no freedom of speech in Ukraine. Do you know that you're arrested in Ukraine for just posting videos of, of, of missiles that are hitting the cities and stuff? I mean, my God, uh, the, the, the SS troops are out big time in Ukraine. And so, yeah, you don't want to post anything, uh, well, and, and have it traced back to you. I guess if you've got a VPN or if you know cybersecurity like I do, you might be able to get something out. Uh, it has become difficult to express an opinion that runs counter to the government position the Globe and Mail reports, uh, the mayor also believes that it is precisely because of the current policy that Ukrainians do not understand what the real situation is at the front. So when you have no freedom of speech, uh, they're, well, I'm sure they don't know. I mean, when this is all said and done, I, I think we're at about a million, well, at least a million two hundred thousand casualties at this point. I want to say a million did. So I think the casualties could be, t could be at two million. Well, I mean, when this thing's all settled and done, uh, once Russia's done crushing Ukraine, uh, I think the numbers are going to be horrific. So let's, uh, this is, I, this is a government, I'm not sure who these guys are, uh, OSINT Defender. The Biden administration has reportedly now agreed with the U.S. defense officials that 
the need for a large-scale sustained military operation against Houthi terrorist group in western Yemen. Once again, we're going to club baby seals, you know. We don't want to go and fight, you know, Iran or take on the, 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 big, the big boys. No, we're going to go club some baby seals down in, the, uh, in Yemen. But uh, that's all right. They're good fighters. If we go in with ground troops, uh, we're going to take some major losses, even in Yemen. So it says uh, a terrorist group in western Yemen, following 10 days of missile and airstrikes, which have failed to end the Houthis' attacks. Did you watch Joe Biden? He says, yeah, the missiles aren't doing anything, but they're a million dollars apiece, man. We're launching all these missiles. I mean, good Lord, do you think that at $34 trillion in debt, we could just sit there and launch million-dollar missiles and have no effect on the Houthis whatsoever? I, it, the world's gone batshit crazy, hasn't it? But let's just continue reading. Commercial shipping in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Officials have stated that they do not expect the operation to drag on for years like previous wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, well, how long were you in Afghanistan? What was it, uh, 20 years? <laughs> I don't even remember. And then, of course, we pulled out and 13 Americans died. Uh, we left $85 billion in military equipment behind I, well, I guess this operation in Yemen is going to go so much better, especially under the Biden administration. And our 44 uh, four-star generals, uh, as Colonel McGregor likes to point out, you know, we only had, well, I don't know, what, six in World War II, and we had a hell of a lot more men under arms. I mean, it, the whole military is just disintegrating. But let's keep going. Previous drag on for years, like previous wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, but that will not have an end date for the operation. So yeah, we'll, we'll be in Yemen, I guess, for the, until the United States goes bankrupt, which I think is coming sooner rather than later. So uh, let's see, as a result of an unexpected attack, the Russians broke through the defenses of Ukrainian armed forces on the outskirts of Dika. In a few hours, the Russians managed to cover several kilometers, this is what I was talking about, and enter the central part of the city. The Ukrainian armed forces are retreating in a decentralized manner in the north, in the direction of the chemical plant, which increases the risk for individual units of being surrounded. So, uh, and you saw that video on, uh, on them uh, surrendering. And then, uh, this is the last thing I'll read to you, so you can, uh, the, but, uh, you know, I thought Megatron, uh, he, he made a good point here, and um, I, I, I do agree with this in a certain kind of way. Uh, he says, the Middle East has already entered a regional war. If you remember a few months ago, the war and the massacre of civilians and children took place only in Gaza. At the time, officials from all sides declared they did not want the conflict to escalate into a regional war. Today, well, and this is a very good point, Hezbollah and Israel are constantly bombarding each other. Israel bombs Syria, targets senior Iranian officials. Yep, that took place. U.S. and U.K. target Yemen. The Houthis are targeting ships bound for Israel. Isra Islamic uh, militant organizations in Iraq and Syria target U.S. bases on a daily basis. I've been telling you those bases in the Middle East, they're going to get vaporized, man. We need to pull those troops out before they're all dead. This thing's escalating. I mean, each day, the escalation to the escalation ladder, like the Duran likes to call it, which I encourage you to watch the Duran. I mean, I tell you what, that, I, I, that Alexander, uh, he's one smart dude, man. I, <laughs> I wish I had tenth of his brain cells. But then it goes on. Iran is targeting the Mossad and their creation ISIS. The regional war is already in full swing, and that is a fact. Peace out. Stay free. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cybersec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter and true social. On Getter, it's the same as X. 
that cybersec guy, and on Truth Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. Also, do minimal postings on Telegram at the world burning. The world burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.